About two weeks ago, I made a video and I said that these two things are not the same. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how these two things are not the same as this. Let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome to Crafting with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda. And thank you so much for joining me today. You heard me right. Two weeks ago, I did a video and when I started the video, I started out talking about how these two things are not the same. Well, after that video, someone let me know that HTV Ron had come out with a new product that was called Sublimation for Sublimation HTV for dark fabric. And I just said, I'm going to test it out. So I purchased it that exact same day and I now I've had time to use it. And I'm just gonna tell you that I love it. So this is the shirt that I made in this tutorial. You're going to see me make this one. You're going to see me follow the whole process step by step, just the way that I always do. And we will, you know, see which one we like the best. Now, previously, my first time using any of this stuff, I used this one. I used it and I made this shirt right here. This is a very, very popular tutorial on my channel. When I made this, I used white heat transfer vinyl followed by clear sublimation HTV in matte followed by my sublimated image. So this is actually three layers. And a lot of people ask, well, how did it wash? How did it wash? How did it hold, how did it hold up in the wash? This has been washed a lot of times. I would say by now it's probably been washed about 12 times. It still has held up very nicely. I think the color is still vibrant. I think it still has nice stretchability. This one right here, these two I actually made two weeks ago when I was comparing these two because I compared the sublimation HTV in matte with the clear sublimation HTV in glossy. So on this shirt, I used the clear sublimation HTV in glossy. And with this one, I did not need a third layer. So I didn't need the white HTV underneath. Well, with this one, I used the clear sublimation HTV in glossy, no, in matte, and I had to have a layer of white heat transfer vinyl underneath it. So this one is made very much like this one. Well, in today's tutorial, we didn't need that because HTV has, you know, stepped it up a little bit with this product. I'm going to go ahead and give you a spoiler alert and let you know that the only thing that I don't like about this so far is the way the instructions are written. I, I just, I think they could be written a little bit better. It was hard for me to understand the steps. Now, I have not washed this and I just pressed it tonight, so I don't know how it's going to wash, but so far, I'm impressed with the way the colors came out. This is glossy, it's vibrant, it's nice, it's beautiful. So let's get into the tutorial, let's look at the materials and go through the whole thing. If you find this tutorial helpful, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Now, without further ado, let's get started. The materials I'm going to use for this project include HTV Rant Sublimation HTV for dark fabric. I'm going to use a green standard grip mat, butcher paper, Cricut heat resistant tape. This is a scotch tape dispenser. I'm using a pin pin weeding tool, a black 100% cotton gildan shirt. My printer is a converted sublimation printer. It is an Epson EcoTank 2760 printer. My heat press is a StarCraft clamshell 15 by 15 heat press. However, you could do this from any heat press that you can get heavy pressure with. I also used a Teflon sheet. Okay, let's get started. I am on the Creative Fabrica website and I'm using a familiar bundle. This is the same bundle that I used when I demonstrated how to print from my DTF printer. And since I was using a different computer at that time, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate how to download the bundle again. So I'm going to click download 
And if you look at the bottom left corner of my screen, I'm going to click that folder. I'm going to click Extract All. I'm going to select Browse. And then I'm going to navigate to where I have my Creator Fabrica file saved. Now you can see I already created a folder, but I'm going to create another one just to demonstrate. So I'm going to click New Folder. And I'll just call these um, Sublimation Butterflies 4th of July. And I will just click out. And I'll navigate back to that folder and I'll click select folder and I'll click extract. And what will happen is all nine of the files will be extracted to that folder. Now let's head over to Cricut Design Space. I am in Cricut Design Space and what I'm going to do is upload the files that I just downloaded from Creative Fabrica. I'm going to click on upload image. I'm going to go browse. I'm going to navigate to where I have the file saved. It was called Creative Fabrica Files and it was the Sublimation Butterflies. I am using this one, this ninth butterfly, because this one is actually a surprise file. Okay, when the file comes in, I'm going to select Complex. I'm going to select Continue. I don't need to do anything right here because it actually doesn't have anything in the background. I'm going to select apply and continue. When it finishes um, uploading over here, I am going to select the print then cut image and I'm going to click upload. And when the file comes in, I'll select it and I'll add it to my canvas. Now the file is going to come in really big and what I can do is just look over here in my layers panel and I can click this exclamation mark and I can click the auto resize to resize it to eight and a half by 14 or eight and a half by 11 because either one of those paper sizes will fit in the Epson Ecotank 2760 and I'm just going to select the change paper size i am going to select the 12 by 12 on mat and i want my um, print then cut page size to be eight and a half by 11. i'm going to select done and let's click on that auto resize it's just going to bring the file down to be at an appropriate size that won't give us an error so when i look over here in the layers panel i don't have an error anymore okay so now what I'm going to do is I am going to go and select offset and the default offset is right at 0 0.25 I am going to wait and just bring that down because that offset is definitely too big for me and what I'm going to do is just kind of drag this uh, the slider over to the left and let's see what 0 0.083 looks like okay it's adjusting to that that's still big let's bring it down more let's go to zero let me just type in the numbers oh that looks good right there 0 0.083 that looks pretty good but let me bring it down a little bit more. Let's go to 0 0.075 and click apply and see if that'll give us a good enough offset. That is actually going to be big. I can, I can tell just by looking at it. Let me go down to 0 0.060. Okay, I like that. I'm going to select apply. Now the offset changed to black and is still selected or is still showing as a print then cut. I'm going to go up here to operation and change it to a basic cut because that offset layer is actually not going to be a print then cut image, okay? All right, so I can move my sublimated image away from that. Okay, look at this. This is different. I haven't ever seen that before. 
all right here's my offset i'm not sure what this is right here but i don't feel like i need it so let me just turn this off for a second and let me just make sure that my offset is going to be good to go and i, I do think it is all right so what we're going to do is i'm going to change that basic cut to white and we are ready to get this um, printed and cut so what i should have are two mats one for my sublimated image and one for my offset so i'm ready to click make it All right, so my first image is the butterfly and my second mat is going to be the offset. I am going to need to mirror this, okay? And even though I'm using butterflies and they're symmetrical, sometimes both sides when you're working with these files are not exactly the same. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mirror this now and I'm gonna go back up here and I'm going to get this printed out. I'm gonna go here, I'm going to select continue. I am going to click send to printer. I am going to send this to my Epson EcoTank 2760 series. I'm going to turn the ad bleed off. I'm going to use my system dialog. I'm going to click print. And then my printer settings will come up. Okay, once my printer settings come up, I can see that my computer looks like it's flashing. It's just I'm not sure why it does that. I'm gonna select preferences. I'm going to go to my sublimation preset with the mirror on. I'm going to click okay. And I am going to select print. Everything I'll do from here will be back on the camera. Since this is my first time using this, I'm definitely gonna have to read the instructions because I haven't tried this. Now on the previous packages of the HTV, the sublimation HTV, it just came with the, the sublimation HTV. It didn't come with this white backing. So this part is new for me. The kind that I'm using is the HTV Ron Sublimation HTV for dark fabric, and I'm using the glossy version of this. Okay, so the first thing it says is use the sublimation paper. So I've already printed out the butterfly. It's sitting back there on my heat press. Hopefully my camera girl can just show you really quickly that it's back there on the heat press. Okay, I'm going to be honest and tell you that I feel like these directions are confusing to me i read them multiple times i'm going to do what i think is the right thing what it what i'm going to do is put this on the mat with this shiny side facing down the reason why i'm doing that is because when i took my weeding tool i could not weed anything so i feel like you can't cut this and the directions say to use the flocked iron-on setting so I'm gonna put this down on the mat with the glossy side face down. This white side is face up, all right? And I'm going to put this in my Cricut Explore Air 2 and I'm going to use the flocked iron on setting. Okay, I am going to cut away the excess. I know it's probably hard to tell, but the butterfly is cut out right here. I did not mean to do that. And I'm going to cut away the excess of this sublimation HTV and use it for a later project. All right, and then I'm gonna weed the excess away. I do have my heat press heating up to 155 degrees Celsius. I have the butterfly weeded and here is the sublimated image. And instead of having my Cricut cut this out, I'm just going to cut around these registration marks 
and do my best to line it up because it really doesn't matter. All right, so now let's move over to the heat press. The first thing I'm going to do is get a crease down the middle of my shirt. Just press it for about five seconds. The next thing I'm going to do, it says position sublimation HTV on clothing, glossy side facing up. Okay, so going to do that. I am going to grab it from this backing. So this is the matte side, this is the glossy side. Now I could fold it in half and just kind of make sure, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to trust that this butterfly is symmetrical enough. Apply heavy pressure for 10 seconds. So let me increase the pressure. I'm going to apply heavy pressure. I am going to cover this. It doesn't say to cover it, but I just want to. I'm going to press this for 10 seconds. Then it says cold peel. So I'm going to remove this from the heat press and I'm going to let it cool down. I'll come back once this is this has cooled down. After you do your first press and you allow your fabric to cool down, pay attention to this part right here because I had not paid attention to this, but it says to place the sublimation paper face down on the HTV. So I'm going to do that after I remove the, the backing. But then it also says set heat press to 100 to 190 to 200 degrees Celsius and apply heavy pressure for 40 to 50 seconds and then this is going to be a warm peel so i had to change the temperature on my heat press and make sure that my heat press is set to heavy pressure so i still haven't removed the backing yet but this shirt has completely cooled down so let's do that let's remove the backing and with the cold peel it's kind of scary sometimes because it feels like the image is going to come up, but don't worry, it won't. Now I'm going to just do my best to line this up. And remember, I didn't do a, you know, a perfect cut. I didn't let my Cricut cut this out. So I'm going to trust that I can line it up. And I have a lot of trust in myself, obviously, for no reason, because I, it's hard to see it this way. So I don't even suggest you do it this way. I can see it a little bit. And hopefully I am doing a good enough job. All right, and I'm going to use some heat resistant tape, just a few pieces, not too much. All right. So what I'm looking for behind this paper is just the, the white outline. I'm gonna grab one more piece of heat resistant tape. And I'm also going to use butcher paper to protect my heat plate. All right, and I'm gonna press this for 45 seconds, heavy pressure. All right. Here is the moment of truth. Hopefully my camera girl will be zooming in so you can see it really, really good. Ooh. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, I love it. Y'all, I love it. I can tell. I can tell. I can. Goodness gracious. Now, I could have done a better job of lining this up. I should have done a better job. I would have done a better job if I had allowed my Cricut to cut this out because I would have had a more exact cut. But I love this. I love this. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Look at that. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Now, if I wanted to, I could add some 
heat transfer vinyl. I could add rhinestones. I could add, you know, whatever I wanted to the outer parts of it. I could just, you know, just add a word in it that represents 4th of July or America or something like that. But I think this is fantastic and I love that stuff. The only complaint I have about that product is the directions are just not well written in my opinion. Okay, so hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please consider liking the video, subscribing to my channel, and turning on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching. Bye!